Do you regret only applying to Oxford for your master's degree? Now, this is very interesting. Here's the tea, okay? The university. Which YouTuber do you have the most beef with? I can't believe I just said that. How did you find out that you got rejected from Oxford? What is your plan for your gap year after you graduate? Next question is, why did you dye your hair? How do you feel about not being able to do your graduation ceremony? Is it difficult having to be long distance with your girlfriend at the moment? Uh, On tonight's program, ladies and gentlemen, we have something that's gonna make you sick. Hello everyone and welcome back to my YouTube channel. My name is Jack Edwards and today I basically thought I would do a little Q&A because I haven't done one for ages and also there are a few more of you over on this channel right now. We are very, very close to 200 thousand subscribers which blows my mind that doesn't make any sense to me so i thought it was about time that some of you got to know me a little bit better so i took to instagram and asked you guys what you wanted to know and let's just say um there were a lot of questions okay so without further ado let's get on with answering some questions that you guys have sent me so oh this one's really nice it just says how are you like genuinely how are you i'm good I'm okay. It is a very weird time trying to work out how to do my final term of university online. And obviously it is really sad that loads of things that I've been looking forward to for so long are all just being canceled. But that being said, I do feel this real high school musical sense of we're all in this together. I don't know if anyone else feels the same way, but I do feel this weird sense of kind of reassurance because everyone else is going through it all at the same time. So I'm just taking each day as it comes, trying to work out this bizarre situation and work out, you know, what my priorities are. And yeah, it's a bit of a strange one. Oh, this person is asking the important questions. What is your go-to Tesco meal deal? Chicken and bacon pasta, iced coffee, and also a chocolate bar because I am a child. How are you staying in contact with your friends during this crazy time? I'm trying to do as much as I possibly can. I'm trying to start the conversation, trying to live life as normally as we can, still try and catch up with people as much as possible. And one really great and easy way to do that is by using Lark, who have very, very kindly sponsored today's video. I genuinely love Lark so much. It's such a cool platform to create and collaborate with your friends and your colleagues and just other people. You know, these times Times are totally unprecedented. They are crazy featuring Beyonce and Lark kind of helps bring you back closer to the people and the passions that you enjoy the most. I've got it on my desktop and my phone so I can chat and video call people whenever I need to and check things like the calendar that is inbuilt into Lark. So let's load up Lark and see who we can find. Hello mate. <laughs> it's only unjaded Jade. I'm good. How are you? I'm very good. Thank you. When was the last time I saw you Jack? too long ago because you were on the other side of the Atlantic for a little bit. Oh, no. <laughs> should you be there now? Yeah, no, I should be. <sighs> That's like why it's kind of sad, but hey ho. We should get everyone from the Study Tube project all together to do a big old lark quiz at some point. Oh my god, I'd love that. Yes, yeah, like do one of your pub quizzes. <sighs> do like a trivia night or something. Pop I love lark. nothing so more good. than a pub quiz. <laughs> and you can actually get up to 100 people on here, so we can just have literally everyone we know on this pub quiz. <laughs> okay, Jade, I'm not being funny. I'm actually, I'm kind of in the middle of something, so I'm, I'm gonna go. <laughs> Okay, but you should promise to like actually have a proper catch up soon. <laughs> <laughs> yes. Talk to you soon. You cool. So yeah, I will leave a link down below where you can check out Lark. Next question is, why did you dye your hair? Why indeed? I just thought it would be fun. It would be quite enjoyable. It would end up looking really cool. And it was none of those things. It was nothing of the sort. I don't know if you can even notice right now, but my hair is kind of a weird, like grayish silver. I did document the whole thing. I don't know whether I'm gonna post it because it was just a bit of a disaster, but basically I tried to dye my hair. I bleached it. It looked like this. Then it looked like this. Then it looked like this. And now when it's in the right lighting, it kind of looks like this. But most of the time it looks exactly the same as it did before I dyed it. So I went through like six boxes of toner and bleach and all of that jazz, spent loads of money, spent loads of time and ended up with hair that looks exactly the same as it did before I dyed it. So that was dumb and yeah, it didn't really work. So <laughs> whoops, just self-isolation identity crisis things. 
You know how it be. Best and worst bits of uni. Well, I can safely say that the worst bit has been quarantine, and I guess by process of elimination, the best bit was everything before that. Okay, this person went in deep. How did you find out that you got rejected from Oxford? Basically, I helped to organize TEDx Durham University, so like TED Talks, but at my university this year, and we were doing some interviews for that, five or six hours worth of interviews, and I opened up my laptop, and I was just logging on um, as the first person we were interviewing came and sat down and just as we started speaking to him I saw this little notification pop up in the corner of my laptop screen That was from Oxford where I'd applied for a master's and there were two of us doing the interview And so I thought well, it won't hurt to just quickly check what the email says So the email popped up on my screen I read the word unfortunately quickly just exited it and just didn't think about it carried on with interviews for about Two hours I think before I had a break and then in the break I had from interviewing people I sent a text to my parents and to my girlfriend just being like hey just to let you know This is what's happened then I did about another three hours of interviews So it was kind of weird because even though something pretty major in terms of like life events and my future had just happened I just kind of had to bury it straight away and actually I kind of continued with that like I didn't speak to anyone about it properly for a good month I was so scared to make a video about it but um, everyone was really really lovely and the response was incredible and so kind so yeah um, that's done been there done that got the t-shirt twice but uh, I'll have a whole wardrobe of Oxford rejections before I give up on that masters <laughs> it's just such an amazing course so after my gap year we'll give it another go where would you rather be right now um three words in the pub <laughs> there's nowhere else I'd rather be Ooh, interesting one what book would you want to go back and read again for the first time um we are all completely beside ourselves such an interesting book and without giving anything away there's a massive plot twist or home fire that had a pretty good plot twist too what is your plan for your gap year after you graduate well I did have a lot of travel plans lined up but coronavirus is currently being a bit of a contraceptive of fun I am hoping to spend the next year just traveling as much as I can learning as many new things as I can which I can then apply to my future applications when I'm applying for more master schemes. I'm definitely going to be enrolling in a screenwriting course because it's something that I've always wanted to do. I would say that the one thing I definitely, definitely want to do is to travel to India because I've read so much Indian literature this year and it's just amazing and I would, I would love to go more than anything. Is it difficult having to be long distance with your girlfriend at the moment? Uh, oh, straight in the heart. Straight in the feels. Yes, I mean, it's definitely not ideal. I'm sure that unfortunately a lot of you are in the same position at the moment, but I would say the main ways that we're trying to keep in contact while not always talking about how rubbish this situation is, is starting to watch TV shows at exactly the same time and then discussing them. We both read the same book and then had a video call to like discuss it and just making plans for when this is all over. What book are you currently reading? Um, I'm currently reading Pride and Prejudice and The Inheritance of Loss. I've always got more than one on the go. I'm a slut for a good book. I can't believe I just said that. How do you feel about not being able to do your graduation ceremony? I mean, obviously not great. All I wanted was to wear my gown and live my Harry Potter dream, okay? Is that too much for me to ask for? I mean, it all started going wrong when I was 11 and I didn't get my Hogwarts acceptance letter. And still to this day, the universe is like, no sir, not today. You will not live your Harry Potter dream. Although to be fair, when I was dyeing my hair, I did look like Ron Weasley and Draco Malfoy. But yeah, at the moment my graduation has been postponed to 2021. So if anything, it's just an excuse to continue living like a student and I'm so fine with that. Do you like YouTubers who aren't a study channel? Um, yes, definitely. Most of my YouTube friends don't have like study tube channels. I love the community of UK YouTube creators. Unfortunately, I don't get to hang out with them very much because I'm always at uni, but yeah, love them all. What is your favorite type of coffee? Um, the closest. I would say I would always go for an iced coffee over a hot one, but like, I am not fussy. I will take any coffee that is put in front of me. Do you wish you did a gap year before university? Um, I'm really glad now that I didn't. At the time, I was this close to doing a gap year, but since I'm now kind of taking an accidental gap year next year because things didn't really work out, I am sort of glad that I didn't. What kind of dog do you have? He or she is so cute. Um, I have a working cocker spaniel who I'm just in love with. He was low key the way that the family replaced me when I went to university, like, Let's not pretend that's not the case. I feel like I'm always walking around the house like, Archie, 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 what are you doing, Archie? And he's like, why are you so obsessed with me? So that is one major perk of being home at the moment. Are you working on any ink outside the box products at the moment? 
Ho ho ho, funny you should ask. Yes, we are working on some very exciting new products. That's another thing that I'm really looking forward to focusing on next year, like really, really being able to put loads of energy into my brand. In fact, I filmed a sneaky little sneak peek the other day, so roll the clip. So I'm using Lark at the moment to send over a document which basically has the list of potential puns for the inside cover of a new product for Ink Outside the Box that we're planning. I always send over a list of puns, good, bad, and ugly. But the really cool thing about Lark is that you can see someone editing the document in real time. So you can see how they're literally reacting and changing what you've put. So if I share that, there we go. We've got my list of Lovely. puns. Um, I reckon highlight your favorite one and then I'll know. Okay, this is mine. Oh, that's my one that's too. My Okay, perfect. Um, let's do it then. Cool. If you could meet anyone, dead or alive, real or fictional, who would you want to meet? Uh, ooh. Truman Capote, I think. He wrote In Cold Blood and Breakfast at Tiffany's, and I just think he'd have some stories to tell. What would you want your last words to be? Um, hopefully a pun. In my last breath, I want to be like, wait, I have something I'm dying to tell you, and then just die. I want some totally naff dad joke on my gravestone, like, this was a grave error. <laughs> Just something really dumb. Do you regret only applying to Oxford for your master's degree? Now this is very interesting. A lot of people have made the comment that I was quite naive or even complacent to only apply to Oxford University. And here's the tea, okay? The university, that application for a master's program was really, really complex. You have to jump through so many hoops. It was also 75 pounds just to apply and it's not the same price at every university, but a lot of the top ones do charge. Through the research that I had done, this was the the only course I'd found that I thought was perfect for me and something that I was really, really passionate about. And also I had university work to focus on. I was writing a 50,000 word book. So I just had a lot of plates spinning and I was trying to just keep them all spinning and not smashed on the floor. I told myself that if I was going to apply to one of these courses, it had to be perfect. It had to be something I was really sure on. And at the time that was the only course that fit the bill. Someone else said, oh yeah, there it is. Um, why aren't you applying to Durham to do your masters? And I think that I have just outgrown Durham. Like I really love it as a uni and I've had the best time ever. But for me, I've always seen this year as my final year and I just can't see myself being back there in October. So definitely not Durham again. However, I am taking this as a bit of a blessing in disguise. The disguise was pretty good because it, it was quite a painful disguise. I do think that I will really benefit from a year out to just focus on myself and so I think it's the right thing. And next year when I have my degree and loads of time to invest into these applications and really give it my best shot and be the best version of myself in each individual application because they all have to be so specific to the very, very specific course and university that you're applying to. Next year, I will definitely be applying to multiple courses, but this time around, I just really had to put all of my eggs in one basket and um, those eggs got scrambled, so. <laughs> Hello, Editing Jack here. I thought I would quickly hop in just to clarify that I never ever in a million years expected to get on the course. Like I was not complacent at all. About 120 odd people apply each year to this course and eight people get in, like there are eight spaces. So I never thought my chances were high at all, but it was the strongest application that I was capable of at the time. I always knew when I applied that it would be way more likely that I would be taking a gap year and reapplying next year once I had my degree and I had time to really, really focus on it again. So I didn't only apply to one course because I'm super cocky and just really backed myself. I just only had the time to invest in my top, top priority. And so that's what I did, but I always knew that I would more than likely be taking a gap year. Was it hard managing a relationship in uni? No, it was the best thing ever. Would highly recommend to a friend. If you could take any other uni degree, what would it be? That kind of rhymes. Shakespeare, is that you? I would take classics, history, or psychology, I think. Favourite movie, um, The Truman Show or The Breakfast Club? What is your worst habit? Um, it would be easier if I could just list my good ones. <laughs> What's happening with the hair, Jack? Honestly, I don't know. It's a hot mess. There's loads growing here. There's it's all going wrong up here. I don't know. When you were younger, what was your dream job? I always wanted to be a singer, but unfortunately I have the vocal capabilities of a deflated tire. It's really a shame because I had like my music videos, my sellout stadium tours, everything planned and I just didn't have the voice to match it. My housemates actually made me take a tone deafness quiz because they were like, this has to be clinical. So yeah, it just wasn't meant to be. To be fair, the other thing I really wanted to be was an author and that is actually happening which is mad. I used to write books about like fire engines and stuff. Um, now I'm writing an actual 
actual book that's actually going to be published, which is actually mad. What is your workout routine? Uh, non-existent at the moment. And you know what? That's fine. It's the year of self-love. What's your favourite poem? Good question. I would say that off the top of my head, Tiara by Mark Doty, which is this beautiful elegy, and also when I consider how my light is spent by John Milton, it's a sonnet about um, him going blind. And I just think that the metaphors that he uses to discuss it are really, really beautiful. And as someone with a prescription as high as mine, um, I quite appreciate a poem about going blind. Which YouTuber do you have the most beef with? Um, I, I don't really do YouTube beef, it's not really, it's not really my thing. I literally can't even think of a single person that I have YouTube drama with. <laughs> I just don't do that. My YouTube channel is vegetarian. This is a beef-free zone. What's your secret embarrassing addiction? Uh, TikTok, except it's not a secret, and I'm not embarrassed about it. I love it. So there's an answer that doesn't answer your question at all. <laughs> Any lockdown TV recommendations? Uh, quiz, I found so fascinating and mind-boggling. And Race Across the World. If you love traveling, you will love that show. Something you've purchased that you regret? Um, this Balenciaga phone case. That was really stupid. Would you ever move abroad? Definitely, absolutely, 100 million thousand percent. I would love to. I would love to experience a brand new place and get to live somewhere outside of the UK for a little bit. How to deal with procrastination. Um, I'm not sure, but if anyone knows, let me know in the comments down below because that's a bit beyond me. I am really struggling with that at the moment, trust me. Which animal do you think is the sexiest? Um, that's a question I'm not gonna answer. Did you always love learning growing up? I would actually say, controversial opinion, no. I don't know really, like especially in the early years of secondary school, I just didn't care about learning really. It was only really once I got to my GCSEs and then my A-levels and now that my love for learning has just gone like up and up and up to the point now where I just am obsessed with it. So weirdly, probably not. And I think that is all we've got time for, but thank you so so much for watching this video. I hope it helped you to get to know me a little bit better. I hope that you don't now hate me now that you know me better. Thank you so much to Lark for sponsoring this week's video. You can check it out down below. If you enjoyed this video, you can give it a big old thumbs up and subscribe for more from me down below because we are getting dangerously close to 200,000. What the hell? But until next time, thank you very much for watching. I've been Jack Edwards and I will see you next time. Bye bye. In case I don't see you, good afternoon, good evening and good night.